Over the years, we've seen quite a few Namco museums, and even specifically Pac-Man collections, appear on various platforms. The Switch itself is home to four different releases of Pac-Man, seven if we count the three different Namco Museum releases, and yet among all of those, the cult classic 3D platforming spin-off Pac-Man World has been oddly absent. This trilogy of games, which spanned the second half of 3D platforming's golden age, are rarely thought of as the peak of the genre, but they are fondly remembered by many when thinking back on that period. Now, 13 years after its initial release on the original PlayStation, the first Pac-Man World returns in a remastered form as Pac-Man World Repack, and brings a spark of hope for those itching to revisit the rest of the trilogy down the road. Now before we get too far, a PSA for those looking to pick this up on Switch. As has previously been announced, the Switch version targets 30 frames per second, as opposed to other platforms' target of 60. However, by default, the game outputs at a full 1080p resolution, which, while it looks great in terms of raw image quality, causes the frame rate to fall well short of its target. However, hidden away at the very bottom of the options menu, below the copyright notice, is a toggle for resolution and performance modes. Switching to performance mode drops the resolution very slightly, but smooths out performance significantly. The loss in image quality is so minor, especially when playing handheld, that I'm baffled why this isn't just the default display mode. So with that in mind, all footage you'll see in this review is captured from performance mode, unless otherwise noted. So with that out of the way, we can get on to the actual game. Pac-Man World is a 3D platformer that falls somewhere between Crash Bandicoot and Super Mario 64. The camera is entirely scripted, however unlike Crash Bandicoot, you're never limited in terms of movement axis. A more modern comparison would be something like Super Mario 3D World. Pac-Man himself runs and jumps through levels picking up collectibles, defeating enemies, and saving his family, who've been kidnapped by the evil Talkman and his ghosts. Pac-Man's primary attack is his Butt Bounce, which both defeats weaker enemies and allows Pac-Man to bounce slightly higher into the air than his regular jump. Pellets picked up throughout levels can be thrown at enemies as a secondary attack. Pac-Man can also charge up a Sonic the Hedgehog-like rolling dash to plow through enemies and launch off ramps. Levels also contain a variety of fruits, which serve as keys for locked doors, along with a Galaxian, which can unlock classic-style Pac-Man mazes there is a lot hidden in every level. These levels are then spread out across a variety of areas, with a few levels and a boss fight in each one. From the start, several different areas can be taken on in any order. After completing each of these, another round of areas will open up. Gameplay is straightforward, with a strong focus on exploration and collectibles. Occasionally, some of the 1999 PlayStation stiffness can be felt in the controls, though it's hard to judge them too harshly for being largely accurate to the original. As mentioned earlier, the camera system feels similar to that of Crash Bandicoot, which unfortunately means it also suffers from the same depth perception problems. I had multiple instances in which I jumped to a platform to my left or right, only to realize that it was in fact much farther into the background than I'd realized. However, this is not an exact one-to-one -one remake. For example, rather than using two separate buttons to swim up and down while in the water, Pac-Man now sinks by default, and a button must be pushed to swim back up. Levels mostly line up with their PS1 counterparts, but occasionally a button will be in a slightly different place, or other elements of the scene will be lightly rearranged. Finally, the cutscenes, which have all been excellently reworked from scratch, now feature no actual spoken dialogue. Rather, characters speak in mumbles, with subtitles doing the heavy lifting. It is presumably a change to allow them to freely retime the cutscenes and not have to provide fresh voice acting for each region. It's understandable, but it's a little disappointing nonetheless. Visually, Pac-Man World Repack looks very nice. It's not as ambitious as other recent PlayStation-era remasters such as the Crash Insane trilogy or the Spyro Reignited trilogy. However, as a result, it looks much better on Switch. The art is clean and simple, and it rarely relies on complex shaders. I could see some saying it looks low budget as a result, and that may indeed be the case. But given the clear amount of effort put into it when compared to the original release, it's hard not to appreciate the work that has been done here. The art looks fairly consistent with both the original and the direction the visuals would take as the series went on. As alluded to at the start, you'll want to swap over to performance mode, but once you do, 
Pac-Man World Repack offers a very enjoyable ride. Pac-Man World Repack is a solid effort to bring back a cult classic. It clearly doesn't have the money behind it that some other remaster projects do, but that works to its benefit in some ways, specifically on Switch. The new art looks excellent, and gameplay largely holds up, save for some limitations of the time hitchhiking their way into this new version. The choice to make resolution mode the default display option on Switch is baffling when the game runs so much better in performance mode with a minimal hit to resolution. But this can be quickly fixed with a visit to the options menu. Just scroll down farther than it looks like you should be able to scroll down. It's hidden down there. Pac-Man World has never been one of the best 3D platformers of all time, but it is a classic and it's well worth playing today. Let's hope that Pac-Man World Repack is a sign of more Pac-Man World to come. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.